Welcome back to another episode of Good Evening from Korea. This is Overlord Pop Tart coming at you again in glorious 1080p HD with fantastic microphone quality that definitely doesn't sound like I'm recording in a tin can. This series is refined, as clearly shown by this intro. Good evening from Korea. A true work of art. A true work of art. Now, uh, moving into the video, I promised my buddy that I would make this a good one. I also promised that I would throw in some clips that he mentioned, which will come up later. So, let's get straight into it. Alright, so, I normally start with when I woke up, but let's talk about how I slept. Last night, I slept kind of off and on, but very, very heavily. So, I woke up, I think, two or three times in the night, and was just kind of like, I'm tired! So long! And was completely out again. It was very much deep sleep. I had like full pajamas on, sweatpants, and was under all layers of my blanket. Like I didn't kick them off, so I was like weighed down by it. It was very, very good sleep for what it was. And by about six o'clock, my kind of off and on sleeping turned to just on. And <laughs> well, I just kind of stayed awake from about six to seven thirty in bed. Just kind of sat there, not even all that much rolling around. Just kind of laid there, comfortable, like. Like, you know when you wake up for school, right, and you're kind of just laying there like, I need five more minutes. It was that feeling, but for like an hour and a half, and I could take that hour and a half. So it was just that, I need five more minutes, and your brain gets to go, dude, we can take another hour, and then the rest of you just goes, oh. even if you don't fall asleep, it's a great feeling. So I was already up in a good mood, better mood when I had breakfast, a delicious bowl of Raisin Bran, gourmet breakfast cereal, no one can tell me different. Continued about my day getting ready, took my shower, didn't seem like there was a lot of liquid on the floor, so it seems the leaking ceiling thing is either solved or not as bad of a problem as I thought. I do still need to wash the floor mats though, because they do still smell completely awful. Just rancid. Rancid. Yeah, that's the word for them. They smell rancid. But I took my shower in that same bathroom with those rancid bath mats. Nonetheless, not really caring about the smell of them, but more caring about the smell of me. So, yeah, I'm going to maintain my hygiene regardless of how it smells in there. Took my shower, went about my day, got ready, threw my uniform on, and my knee went out, kind of getting ready for that. So that was kind of a pain to put up with, but it wasn't that bad. It just kind of hurt to move. It wasn't like one of those... It wasn't that. It was just kind of... So I was able to get my stuff on and get to the office. Not exactly late, but definitely not early enough like that I wouldn't get in trouble. <laughs> so I kind of lucked out and I didn't get yelled at for it. So starting into my day at the office, I was looking for the script to re-record the audio for my United Nations video. And it did get sent to the company Google Drive. So I had a coworker send that to me onto my government computer printed that off of that because my government computer is hooked up to the printer because it's a whole hullabaloo and kerbunkled system that we have. Printed that off, took the parts that I remembered weren't in it and cut them out, then listened to my audio and timed myself for each section of audio that I needed to re-record, cut out anything else that I forgot to cut out, change anything else, yada yada. I went about that for pretty much the entire morning. It wasn't a very long time in the office because I got in at 9.30 on the dot, which, like I said, not late, but not early like I should have been. And we left at about 11.15-ish, so about an hour and 45 minutes. I was digging at that video and finding that script for a good half an hour before I started counting time. And to be honest, it is kind of hard to keep focused, even when there are so few people in our office, because I mean, we like to kind of go back and forth with each other, talk in the office. It's it's very personal at the office. It's not just kind of sit at your station, get your work done, which normally I'm for, but when I'm trying to get stuff done, it is quite annoying. Uh, I, I talk about Ukraine a lot with my coworkers and what's going on there because that's a, just a common topic of conversation amongst the military at the moment. And it just kind of took time, but that's fine. I still got some stuff done, and I took my scooter back uh, to the barracks from lunch. Ate lunch. It was, I think it was two burritos and some hot sauce. Now, while eating these two burritos, I tried to open Forza Horizon 5 and Forza Horizon 4 because I thought, you know what? I was talking about GTA the other day being the wrong game to relax to. 
Forza Horizon 4 was always a great game. Forza Horizon 5 is still a broken and glitchy mess. It was still broken and glitchy as I tried to open it and it crashed twice. Then I tried to open Forza Horizon 4, old reliable. That crashed twice. So I gave up. Oh well. And opened up Grand Theft Auto. I thought, okay, fine, I'll just drive around in this. And I went down to the little casino area where you can win cars. I've gone over it before in previous episodes, but it's, you spin a wheel, you can win something. And this was the last day, I believe, to spin the wheel and win a Mark I Ford Escort. Now, I really like the Mark I Ford Escort. I've talked about it on a previous video. And today I went down there, I spun the wheel, and as I was, like, texting or something like that, I looked up and I've won the vehicle. Congratulations to our player at the Lucky Wheel, who just won a luxury car. Hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully I found some good music for it. At the end of lunch, I did cut it close again, but I was also on time, just not early, to the motor pool, which is there. I can point at it, and I can actually probably see it from my window in the day. We were in the back left of the area, taking out bags to assemble a tent. And unfortunately, in this area, as I said, this was a concrete kind of paved area. So with a tent, you normally put stakes in the ground, and that holds the tent up, but we couldn't do that. So what we did was we got the tent properly oriented, put the poles up on the tent, and then we had seven people for the eight poles. So my sergeant grabbed a pole as well, and then we all lifted it, held it, and it was like saggy and heavy, so we all had to like lean back and put our weight into it. And what my sergeant did while we were holding that in place is he let go of his pole and then ran around taking pictures for what we call a sit rep or like a it's a thing basically where we tell the people in charge of us that we were working and he took pictures as like a proof of that and I took pictures as well I've got some I'll put them up just entirely I won't mess with the whole like thing over here deal I'll just put them up entirely so bing bang bada bop boop that last one was a photo of a bus thing with like a dump truck trailer on the back but also a crane and it wasn't even like a crane like a hook it was a crane like a claw it was this cool looking machine where the dude just got out of like this front van section walked past the little container and hopped on this like arcade style claw machine and took a bunch of garbage and threw it in there but i just thought it was funny because it said sus I couldn't get any pictures of us holding the tent up because I was holding the tent up, but you just have to take my word for it. It was quite the ordeal. It took until nearly three o'clock and we started at one. So it was nearly a two hour thing. When everything was all said and done, we headed back to the barracks, grabbed our PTs. Some of us went into the bathroom. Some of us grabbed snacks. I just took a bit longer to get my PTs ready because I'm slow. As a short kind of almost commercial break, I'd like to include this video that my sister sent me that I find hilarious. It's of my small dog, Trixie, who is a Chihuahua Shih Tzu mix, and my sister who sent me it, sitting at the table. I assume that my sister has just eaten something because of the behavior of the dog that you can see here. What? No! Get down! Now, with that rather entertaining adorability out of the way, after I had obtained my PTs, I met with a few other people downstairs who were already waiting. 
and we walked over to where my coworker had parked the van. I was driving. We all hopped in. I drove it over to the opening of our building for the other people who weren't quite down yet. We parked, waited a minute for another person to come down. He hopped in, and then we all went down the road. And the radio was broken in the van, but we kind of just had a good time anyway because we were all kind of in a good mood after getting that tent thing done. We had a good time out there. And so the whole time we were driving back, it was just kind of like talking back and forth and throwing jokes. And at one point, my coworker mentioned, hey, weren't you going to try something with this van? Because I was going to try something with the van. Because I recorded this video earlier that day. As you may be able to tell, I'm trying to get the turbo to spool because my buddy loves turbo diesels. And I was having a ton of fun in it the other day, as I mentioned with my giggling clip. So, once reminded of it, I said, oh yeah, I was trying to do it. I was trying to do this. And once we got up to about 45-ish, I just went <laughs> on it really, really quickly. Because as you may not know, new vehicles made after, I don't know, the 90s, have systems called drive-by wire. Now, you would think that that would be like, you know, a wire connected to maybe your throttle pedal and then the throttle on the actual engine. No. That's, like, I think drive-by cable, technically. I don't know what it's actually called, but that's a direct connection. Drive-by wire is a computerized connection where you press down, and it's like clicking a button on your phone. Press down, electronic signal, oh, okay, this happens. And in a car, it's, hey, go faster. And then about a second of delay, and then the engine goes, oh, I'm supposed to be going faster, and then it goes faster. I normally hate those systems. But in a really heavy vehicle with a tiny engine and a lot of turbo lag because it has to have a large amount of pressure in the turbo to make it any kind of usable vehicle on the road and to build pressure in the turbo, it takes a little bit, so it lags, thus giving turbo lag. If you go like this really quickly, you don't give it enough time to actually generate enough power to go forward but it is enough to signal the engine to make more power. So the turbo goes, I need to spool, I need pressure, give me air. And then it goes and sucks in as much air as it can. And then it goes when you let off of it because it's like, oh, I don't need this, get it out. We're not getting any throttle, we don't need to be going faster. So essentially, you don't move, but you get noises as you drive along. So whenever I get bored in that vehicle, I can just and then go, as previously demonstrated. And so I was doing that, and we were all laughing at it, and one of my coworkers was like, don't do that. I'm like, it doesn't even affect the car. And then I do it five times. <laughs> it was just us kind of goofing around, and it was, it was a good time. Uh, we all got back to the office. I let them all get out, and I parked the van, and by the time that I get upstairs, they're all in their PTs. And I'm like, oh, what's happening? And uh, my coworkers saying, oh, yeah, we're getting released early for PT. Now, this was at 3 o'clock that we were getting released. Like I said, that thing before lasted until almost 3 o'clock. We got to the office around 3. We're getting released early for PT, they say. And I say, oh, shoot. Well, I had things to do. So I went to my sergeant. I said, hey, is it okay if I stay behind and not go to PT and work on this video because I need to re-record? And he said, yeah, sure, do what you need. And so I hopped into the recording booth. They all left after finding my keys that I accidentally left on the desk and didn't give to the person who would be driving. Sorry. After that was figured out and they all left, I hit the recording booth and I recorded what I needed to. And in between takes of re-recording, I was giving my voice a break, as you should do when you record. And as I was taking breaks, I found this really cool YouTube channel called Junkyard Digs, I believe. Now, for my family back home, who knows nothing about cars, if you want to learn in a really laid-back, somewhat entertaining, and actually really, really thorough and understandable way anything about cars, go ahead and watch him. And for anyone watching this video who isn't family and knows nothing about cars, same recommendation. Uh, if I were to recommend one to start on, the one I started on was their project with the Cornfield MG Midget, which is where they find an MG Midget, which is a tiny British car. I can throw up a picture of it. Uh, in a cornfield, and they fix it up after not running for like 30 years. But th that was an enjoyable thing to add on to my recording, because it kind of made me want to get done with sections so that I could rest and watch more of their video. And I watched more when I got home. 
I left that recording booth at about 4.45, caught a taxi, who was super nice, by the way. Got home and just started taking my shower, cleaning up, all that kind of stuff. I, I took my shower first. Then I threw my laundry in the washing machine. It's in the dryer now. I need to get it when this video is done. Then I made some soup, some broccoli soup, some broccoli and cheese soup, I think. So I'm probably going to be a bit blubbly tomorrow, but oh well. And it did all my dishes as well as the silverware today. So it was a pretty productive afternoon. I was texting my buddy, as I mentioned earlier, and he reminded me, well, he didn't remind me, but through our conversation, I was reminded that I didn't include a clip of his that he sent me. So I will include that clip now. Oh, boys, there's a possum out here. The possum ain't no more, boys. We got him. We're taking our boy Jerry home, boys. And I'd just like to note, before the very final end off, Noom means to be very, very sleepy in the process of completely passing out, and as you are in that state, you are completely brain dead. You have to say it like Noom. There you go. New word for you today. As I always try to throw a fun fact in here, I don't always, I sometimes. I sometimes try to throw a fun fact in here. Now there's a fun fact for you. Noom. It's a new word. Make it a thing. All right. I'm going to end out here. Thank you very much for watching the video. Whatever time it is for you, wherever you are in the world, whether it be a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, whatever you're experiencing, I do sincerely hope it's good. I just heard somebody knock on my door, so I'm going to see you. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. This has been Overlord Pop-Tart, and I'll see you the next time. Stay frosty.